we can move electricity from a power plant on the ground up to a flight vehicle. Okay, so today I'm very excited to have Robert Millman from L Sky joining me on video here. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hello morning? there, Scott. How are you? Yeah, very good indeed. So, Robert, thank you for joining me um, in this series of um, you know, of interviews that I'm conducting with uh, with leaders in the tech with purpose space. It's really about trying to understand what it is that's driving you, the, the, the reasons you're doing what you, you're doing, some of the journey that you took to get here and just understanding more about you know, that, that passion, the purpose. So you know, I think what would be really good to understand is, you know, why is it you do what you do um, at L Sky? And we'll, we'll talk about um, L Sky as well in a minute, but tell me the story. How did you get here? What kind of got you to this point? Well, it's hard for me to separate out why from what. It's kind of asking, if you ask someone, why do you breathe oxygen? It's hard to explain why without explaining what oxygen is. Mm -hmm. um, so in my case, I'll have to explain what we're doing first at Elsky. Uh, what we're working on is moving people faster, um, faster and further uh, than they've ever gone before. And to do that, we have to make flight dramatically faster, high mock, less expensive, um, which means it has to be much more efficient, which means it has to make a much smaller footprint on the environment. Um, those, those two things go hand in hand together. Uh, you could view it as we're making a smaller footprint and an outcome of that is people go faster and cheaper, or you could view it as we help people go faster and cheaper and an outcome of that is there's less impact on the environment. Uh, but, mm -hmm. Um, everyone, what, what we found is everyone wants those three things. No one says I'll pay more money in order to get more fumes out of the back of the vehicle. Everyone wants things that are environmentally beneficial, that are faster and that are cheaper. Less time in the airport, uh, more time with your friends, uh, you know. So then I guess that begs the question of, well, why this particular problem? Why did we choose that? And there's either a very short answer or a very long answer to that, but not much in between, unfortunately. <laughs> but the short answer might be, you know, an acquaintance of mine once said, you don't choose your passions, your passions choose you. Um, and, and we're very comfortable with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's say a, a longer answer would be that we started with space launch. It's it's the hardest part of the problem, the deep end of the pool, so to speak. It's the fastest speeds that are involved. How do we make space launch something that is economical enough that the average Jane or the average Joe can go to space? Um, and so we worked a lot. We looked at combustion. Combustion comes with a lot of problems with it. There are a lot of limits imposed by it. And we worked on electrification as our answer. Um, okay, so why electrification? It's cheaper, it's faster. Uh, it doesn't make as much of an impact on the environment. We looked at, well, why space launch is, you know, why would anyone wanna get involved in launching people into space? I worked at a company where, you know, people tried to outline that in a, in a mission statement, something you could put up in a PowerPoint slide. And, you know, very quickly, there were multiple answers from the room. And uh, I came to the conclusion that there were probably more answers than there were people in the company. And so that as you grow the company, you have even more answers. So, you know, some of the answers that I heard that, that intrigued me uh, were, uh, you know, there's, there's an inherent challenge of a hard problem. People like a challenge. There's the freedom of the open road. Uh, there's that aspect of going someplace, you know, where no one has gone before. Um, the idea of a new frontier, frontiers have new possibilities uh, with them. Uh, you know, there's also, there's another nuance to the exploration. I'll, I'll call it the intellectual equivalent of Lara Croft Tomb Raider. You know, there's the idea of you're breaking into something and finding something that people haven't seen for a long time. Um, and maybe there's also 
just the fact that you can't do it now. Um, there are some people, you know, I think uh, Moby Dick, there's that line that says, people love to sail forbidden seas. There's, there's something about forbidden fruit that seems attractive, you know. Uh, so those are, those are all good reasons. For me personally, uh, just me, uh, Carl Sagan uh, from the 1980s had a line that, um, you know, natural selection has crafted this kind of wanderlust in, in certain people, uh, maybe all of us, uh, some of us more than others, but uh, I think he phrased it as uh, a restless few drawn by a craving they can hardly articulate or understand uh, to understand new worlds, uh, something along those lines. So, you know, that's the longer answer, but we're back at to, you don't choose your passions, your passions choose you in the end. And we are just passionate about enabling people to move further and faster. Oh, that's really, really interesting to hear. So, yeah, sorry, that's the long answer. I mean, in, oh. and no, 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 it's great. Yeah, I, I think the long answer was was uh, more contentful than the short answer for sure. <laughs> Um, so, so that I mean, the idea then in getting people um, between from point A to point B faster um, is by taking them higher, um, but using electricity to do that. And is that the idea to take them into space to get them um, to travel further? Yes, but it's it's a range, or or put differently, combustion, where we we store energy and fuel and we burn it along the way and we kick out the emissions out the back. It's, it, it's created a kind of false dichotomy. So we have a false intuition about travel right now. Um, you can either travel below, let's say um, 40,000 feet or you know, 30, 40,000 feet, 10 to 13, 14 uh, kilometers, or you can travel up in orbit, but not much in between. Um, that's because combustion engines aren't very efficient. Uh, they, the one thing combustion engines do is they store fuel, they store energy well. But other than that, they're more expensive, they're limited in where they can travel, uh, um, they kick out a lot of emissions. There's a lot of downsides. If we can electrify these vehicles, electricity is this marvelous energy. We take it for granted in the household because in the wired world, it, it comes easy and cheap. If we can bring that easy, cheap energy to flight, then we've really changed the nature of flight. Suddenly you would fly at, um, you would fly higher. It depends on where you're going, obviously, but aerodynamicists, the, the people who are involved, if you talk to the woman who's designing the plane, she will tell you that she'd much rather fly at 120, 150,000 feet, let's say up in the neighborhood of 36 kilometers. But the combustion engine can't fly that high. It needs more oxygen than that, so it's forced down lower, which means you're forced to stay in the lower atmosphere where it's thicker and harder to fly faster and, and you know, supersonic transportation is suddenly really expensive because you're in the lower atmosphere. You go up higher and it's much more affordable. Um, so yes, higher, um, but higher is, is a complicated thing involving uh, you know, the aerodynamics of it and uh, the, the drag that's induced and, and the cost. So a uh, question about inspiration. So if, uh, if there's somebody out there in, in your field, if there's somebody out there who's uh, looking to try and have an impact on, on the planet, on, um, on travel um, and human transportation, if you could give them, you know, some some inspiration or point them towards something that inspires you, what would that be? Where would, where would we go and look? I, th I think it'd be a little broader than, than what you said. I, you know, passions are things that are worth nurturing. Um, there are lots of good and useful things competing for your attention. Um, and, and passions don't naturally grow or die. It's, it's like any relationship. It takes some attention paid to it. Um, and so it's what you choose to do with it. I would say, you know, let's say three things they should consider doing. Number one is explore what you care about. Um, and that could be anything. It could be space flight. It could be playing the bagpipes. It could be saving the planet. It could be raising a child. It's, it's really what, what drives you. 
Um, the second step is I find it extremely useful to connect with other people who care about the same thing. Um, we, we live in this marvelous age with this internet. We're doing this interview over the internet. It's fantastic, you know. Um, you'll learn a lot from listening to other people, but you'll learn a lot from talking as well. Just, just having to compose your thoughts and lay them out for someone will force you to rethink them in ways you wouldn't do if you were off by yourself, or I should say most people don't do off by themselves. Um, and it, it could become a hobby, it could become a career, it could become a passion, or as uh, you know, you've said, an obsession. Um, you get to choose that along the way, but, but go mingle with people and talk to them. And then let's say the third bit of advice would be give yourself a little freedom along the way. You may find you get into something and it's either not what you thought it would be or it doesn't hold the same uh, luster that it, it formerly did. It's okay to change paths. You're not, you're not you know, picking something for the rest of your life. You're picking for what you want to work on now. Um, and if it, if it feels like an obligation, then it's probably time to rethink things. It should feel liberating. You should feel like, you know, I am so excited about this that, um, you know, I'm willing to put aside various things that I used to think of as important. Like, you know, I thought it was critical to make enough money to pay the mortgage every month. But now I realize that that's not so important to me because this other thing is more important. When you're in that mode, then you've probably found something that uh, is, is a good passion to follow. You know. Well, that's a brilliant answer. Brilliant. So, um, thinking forward in this time machine, five years, what would you like, how would you like people to kind of reflect on your personal and the company's achievements? Boy, um, I guess I have two reactions. Uh, you know, um, one is if I ever go to a cocktail party, and I overhear someone else say, you know, if anyone charges you more than $10,000 to go to orbit, you're being ripped off. That will be a great accomplishment. <laughs> that will mean that pretty much anyone could save a little, put a little money aside and decide to go. It, it you know, $10,000 US is not a small amount of money, but right now it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend a few minutes in space. Mm -hmm. um, visiting there and spending a lot of time up there it 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 ought to be at least at the price that let's say a year a comparable to what a european would have paid a couple hundred years ago to make that long sail to america um, that was something that the the average person could do they may had they may have sold all sorts of everything all their worldly goods to do it but they were able to do it um, that's our minimum threshold. We'd like to do better, but that's the minimum, uh, you know, or, or I should say the maximum price we want to hit. You know. Excellent, excellent. In, in when you develop your products, take your products to market, um, you're aiming to be able to cut the emissions from, from travel like this. Um, but how are you measuring that? And are you having, are you planning on any other kind of offsetting or other reductions to help achieve these goals as well? I think having worked on a number of aerospace development um, projects, there's, we don't have the level of detail that your question would assume. In other words, at least in a, when you're working on a transformational technology as opposed to an incremental uh, technology. And so what we're working on here at Electric Sky are a couple technologies, but maybe the key one for this discussion is transmitting power over long distances. We can, we can move electricity from a power plant on the ground up to a flight vehicle. Um, in the case of a space launch vehicle, those rockets you see on TV, um, about 90% of by weight is just the propellant. So it's just fuel, it's a flying gas tank. Um, if we can eliminate that 90%, well then to first order, we've made the vehicle 10, per, the vehicle is only 10% the weight of the other vehicle. Right away, it's more efficient. You're not moving all that weight. Um, it's one tenth as much. And 
if we can move the power up to the vehicle, we leave the power generation on the ground, uh, making it so that the, the, the hard thing is the power generation. We leave that on the ground where it's heavy and we move the vehicle. Now the vehicle can be much lighter, much faster. It can travel at higher altitudes. All sorts of goodness comes from that. So is that, that's a very long answer to your question. You asked for a metric and I did not give you one. You, know? you didn't. <laughs> I was making note, there was no metric, but that's fine. <laughs>